uh, some comments related to your homework. Uh, absolute value 2x minus 3 greater than 5. What's this mean? This means that either 2x minus 3 is greater than 5 or 2x minus 3 is less than negative 5. If a quantity is greater than 5, its absolute value is greater than 5. If that quantity is less than negative 5, its absolute value will again be greater than 5. So when you see an inequality, you split it into two. Uh, when you see an absolute value inequality, you split it into two regular equalities. Okay, if you have absolute value 4x minus 7 plus 6 greater than 15, what do you do? Well, first of all, you have to have it in this form before you can say what uh, the quantity inside has to be either greater than or less than. So in this case, now we have the absolute value of a quantity greater than 9. And that means that the quantity is either greater than 9 or it's less than negative 9. Once more, same idea. Now, if we have the inequality absolute value 2x minus 3, uh, had somebody take that inequality and add 3 to get, uh, not, not, I'm sorry, had somebody take the expression absolute value 2x minus 3 and then uh, adding 3 to that uh, used the idea that adding this 3 to this negative 3 would give you 0, which would reduce this to just absolute value of 2x. Okay, but that is absolutely not the case, not to overuse the word absolute. Um, for example, if x equals 1, what's the value of 2x? It's 2. What's the value of absolute value of 2x minus 3? Well, 2 times 1 minus 3 is negative 1. Absolute value is 1. And if we add 1 to 3, we get 4. So when x equals 1, these two sides are not equal. So absolute value 2x minus 3 plus 3 is not equal to the absolute value of 2x. And once more, uh, I can add the 6 to both sides of this equation, but I can't add the 6 inside the absolute value sign. It just leads me to a contradiction. Um, OK, another comment on the homework. One of the problems that I saw uh, was 2x squared minus x less than 6. And how do we simplify this? Well, this is a quadratic inequality. We need to recognize this as a quadratic. And whenever you have a quadratic expression, you're going to want to somehow compare it with 0. Okay? So, well, we, 2x squared minus x is a quadratic expression. We can't compare it with 0. But if we subtract 6 from both sides, we get 2x squared minus x minus 6, which we can compare with 0. So 2x squared minus x minus 6 will be less than 0. And now we can factor this. And why would we want to do that? Well, first of all, the factoring is pretty obvious. Make sure you understand how we factor this. But um, having factored it, now we have two factors, which when multiplied give us le something less than 0. Well, OK, up here, same expression, same uh, inequality, just rewrote it up here so we can easily refer to it. Okay, we have absolute value of 2x plus 3 times x, not absolute value, the quantity 2x plus 3 multiplied by x minus 2 is less than 0. That's true. How can that be true? Well, there's only one way it can be true. It's going to be true if this quantity and this quantity have opposite signs. Whatever's in this parentheses would have to have a sign opposite to what's in these parentheses, because if it doesn't, uh, you're not going to get a negative number, which is less than 0. OK, so this and this have to have opposite signs, which means you have two choices. This one can be less than 0, and this one can be greater than 0. Or this one can be greater than 0, and this one can be less than 0. OK, well, in this case, if this is less than 0, then we solve this inequality to get x less than negative 3 halves. We solve this inequality to get x less than 2. Now, these both have to be true. Okay? Um, 
so would this and this be equivalent to saying that x is less than 2? Well, 1 is less than 2. 1 is in between negative 3 halves and 2. Uh, and if x is 1, then this is true, but this isn't. These both have to be true. Well, if you think about it for a minute, you'll conclude that the only way they can both be true is if, 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 if x is less than the lesser of these two. Okay? x can't be in between these two. It has to be less than the lesser of the two, which is negative 3 halves. And that could be also visualized in terms of the number line. Um, I'll clutter things up here a little bit, but here's 2, and here's negative 3 halves. Okay? This inequality, x less than 2, would correspond to this arrow. And the inequality, x less than negative 3 halves, would correspond to this arrow. Okay? x has to satisfy both of these conditions. And the only way it can satisfy both is to be the same as this arrow. Okay? The numbers less than three negative, negative 3 halves satisfy both inequalities. Any number greater than 3 halves will sat might satisfy this inequality, x less than 2, but won't satisfy this inequality, x less than negative 3 halves. Okay? And then if we do the same thing with these two inequalities, we find that x has to be greater or equal to negative 3 halves, and x is greater than, x, I'm sorry, x is greater than negative 3 halves, and x is greater than 2, and that's, they're both true if x is greater than 2. We could sketch a similar diagram for these inequalities and convince ourselves of that. Okay, so, well, what we have then is we have x is less than 3 halves from here, or x is greater than negative, uh, x is greater than 2 from these inequalities. So we have this or this. If x is this or if x is this, it's true, which means that we take the inequality x less than 3 halves. We can sketch that here. Well, we can say solution is x is less than negative 3 halves or x is greater than 2, just what we said here. We can graph that. x less than 3 halves is this arrow. x greater than 2 is this arrow. We're excluding what's in the middle here. Now, I go on with something that really wasn't part of the question, but it's worth understanding. Okay? What's the midpoint of the interval between negative 3 halves and 2? Well, you can easily find the midpoint. Uh, you just average these two numbers, and you're going to get the number in the middle. And averaging these two numbers, negative 3 halves and 2 adds up to 1 half. Dividing that by 2 to complete the averaging, we get 1 fourth. So the midpoint is 1 fourth. We can verify that this is the midpoint because from 1 fourth to 2, the distance is 7 fourths. Okay? You could do that. You could do the arithmetic. Uh, you could subtract uh, 2 is 8 fourths, and we subtract 1 fourth, we get 7 fourths. Or we just understand that if we go from 1 fourth, we go 1 unit, we get to 1 and 1 fourth, and we still have to go three-fourths of a unit to get to two, so one and three-fourths makes seven-fourths. We can similarly verify that from one-fourth to negative three-halves, the distance is, again, seven-fourths. So we've confirmed that this is the midpoint between these two points. Now, if x satisfies this and this, that is, if x is either in this arrow or within this arrow, or the interval represented by this arrow and the interval represented by this arrow, um, then it lies more than 7 fourths of a unit from the midpoint. So the distance of x from 1 fourth is more than 7 fourths. How do you write that as an absolute value inequality? Well, that says <coughs> the distance from x of x from 1 fourth is absolute value of x minus 1 fourth. Be sure you understand that. That's you, you, you can't understand this if you don't understand this, okay? And if that's more than one-fourth, then that absolute value is greater than seven-halves. 
So now we have an absolute value inequality that describes this interval. But of course, this interval corresponds to the solution of this inequality, which means that this inequality is equivalent to this inequality. And that's kind of interesting. Uh, that's the kind of knowledge uh, that I, I'm probably not going to ask you give you something like this and ask you to give me the equivalent absolute value inequality, or even worse, give you the absolute value inequality and ask you to figure out a quadratic inequality that goes along with it. But quadratic inequalities are associated with absolute value inequalities in a very uh, intertwined manner. And it's kind of worth understanding that. If you actually show me that on the test, even though I don't ask it, I'll probably give you a little extra credit for it. OK, very good. Make sure we understand the solution of this inequality, the graphing of the inequality. And then you should understand how this absolute value inequality gives you the same graph, because that's something we've already covered, something you really want to understand, how an absolute value inequality is related to the center of an interval and either to the region outside or inside that interval.